then you need to just be quiet and listen to what I'm telling you. Because Christ told you to just follow whatever it is that the Pharisees tell you to do. Right? So I'm telling you, the fallen angels, can garbage. We, can, can we do right? Jubilees and, and Enoch, garbage. Let me ask you something. Toilet paper. Can, can we do right? What do you mean can we do can right? Can we do right? Can we be perfect like the Pharisees taught? Uh, uh, all scripture talks about being good. Can we do that? Yeah, what's good? We can do that. You actually can be a perfect person every day. Yeah, if the Lord wants me to. Can you be a perfect person? If the Lord wants me to. Do you, are you a perfect person? Yes. You are? Yes. No, you're not. Prove it. No, you're not. What does it mean to be perfect? Perfect is to follow all the laws that God has set forth before us. Okay, so that's perfection. Okay, so prove. And I don't. the only one who, who so did that was Jesus Christ. Prove I don't. I can't because I don't know you like that. So what you're doing? I know, so listen, I'm no, 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 stop, stop. I'm, no, I'm, I'm a Pharisee. Like this. No, I know stop. I'm a good I'm a, person. I'm a Pharisee. I'm better than most people a, that I know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Pharisee, so you gotta listen. I'm a Pharisee, so you gotta listen. I'm a Pharisee, so you gotta listen. You gotta listen. Okay. So by you just saying that perfection is keeping all the law, statutes, and commandments, and by you saying that I'm not perfect, I say, well, I know you. You're not perfect. Prove it. You were born. Pro Jesus Christ. Were born was, Jesus Christ was born. In the flesh. Jesus Christ was born in the flesh. Yes. So, so, and he so did what something we can't do. Look one. We can not do. What you got? Do you like oh. women? Do you like women, brother? Hell yeah. Okay. Do, do you? you think about? Yes. Very much so. So then, how are you going to sit up and jump for like okay, women? What's the problem with okay, liking women? Okay. Well, What's the problem with liking women? The thing women? about it is, do you lust after women? I lust after single women. Most definitely. Do you lust after women, brother? Single women, most definitely. Okay. I'm just trying to make a point here. You're imperfect. How? Hold on. Imperfect. Hold on. Do you have kids? Yes, I do. How did your kids get here? From sex, you, which, mean, which, which means married, which means that you saw a woman, you saw a woman and desired her enough to go in the room and yeah, lay down with her. Yeah, yes that's lust. So, yeah. so that's sin now. I, I told you, I'm imperfect. That's sin. No, I'm telling you that that's not sin, brother. That is sin because we're not, we were not married. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, sex is marriage in the Bible. Sex is once you once you stick your thing in that woman. Guess mm -hmm. what, brother? That is your responsibility. That's, that's, not, a, right. that's not married. That's that's you literally marriage. Genesis 24. Genesis 24, 67. The act of sex is, is sex. marriage. No, well, uh, uh, that's that's a part of marriage. That no, that's the, that's the covenant married. of marriage. That's not covenant if you're not married to her. Now, if so, okay, times, fine. Was Adam and Eve married? We can say they were married. So who ordained their marriage? God. How did they get married? Well, they went down I, to the courthouse. I'm going deeper than I can go because I don't. I, so I, stay I, out the deep waters. Mm -hmm. Let's stay in the kiddie pool. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, because remember, I'm a Pharisee. Christ told you whatever I tell you, observe and do that. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm telling you that according to the Bible, sex is marriage. Genesis 24, 67. So therefore, I done, I done been married about a hundred times. As long as, that woman, as, as, long as, as long as that woman is single and not already somebody else's wife, guess what, brother? Congratulations, you that. are a polygynist man. I can't man. even say that. Listen, if as long as the woman is, as long as the man is not dealing with no other man, then guess what? If that woman, well, if that woman every is, every woman we're dealing with is well, dealing with another right. man. No, no, don't no. ever think you the only one. No, listen, hell no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm listen, just saying. Listen, listen, listen. The brothers you see up here, we run tight ships. We know we the only one. Yep, yep. We run tight ships up here. Okay, we, we don't. We not. We not for all that, I right? Mean, that's I not mean, what. That's not what we. I do. would like my that's wife. Not what my wife do. is one of the <laughs> best women that I've ever known in my life, all and I know she's the only woman. I'm the only man that I'm the only man she be with. I know that for sure. But in my past. And not just, we're not going to talk about women. There's other things that we do. Just our thoughts make us sin. Brother, just our thoughts. Your attitude. Even as black. Shalom. 
I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is through the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. But his one and only true name is Yahabashai. And pretty much the clip that you saw is by a particular camp, you know, that's in um, Detroit. And um, pretty much you got a lot of these different men out here. You know, they find out that they're Israelites and they start their own camp. But the camp is out of order. You know, they teach them with hats on. They really don't know the basics. They don't even know the basic fundamentals like faith grace you know the importance of that as being a sinner you know they don't really teach about the importance of Yahabashah's blood and sacrifice it's all about me 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 oh i'm perfect i can keep the law no what did Yahabashah say Yahabashah said that he came to call the sinners unto repentance so you have to acknowledge that you're a sinner called to repentance you have to realize that any sacrifice that you would offer up under that Old Testament or Old Covenant, the Most High will not accept none of your sacrifices, all right? Because we know through Yahabashah's blood and sacrifice, sin offering is done away with. And what you don't realize is that, you know, your sacrifice, as far as doing, having a street ministry, doing videos, live streams, you know, spreading the gospel and doctrine, that's only going to be accepted through Yahabashah's blood and sacrifice, all right? So when you say things like, I can keep the Lord perfectly, I'm perfect, you're making yourself equal with Yahabashah, and that's very dangerous, and you're going to end up being destroyed for that, all right? We are sinners called back to repentance. The woman that you have, she is not a virgin. She is a whore pursuant to Amos 7 and 17 and the curses of Deuteronomy 28th chapter. One way or another, one way or another, you are sinning against the Heavenly Father and you need a Savior. All right. So you got particular camps like Sakari, you know, the Genesis camp, this camp and plenty of others. You know, they teach that they are perfect. No, you're not perfect. Just because you come into the truth, that doesn't mean that you're perfect. All right. Now, let's read this because it's all about having faith. And when you come into this truth, it's all about suffering. This is Luke chapter five and verse 30. Matter of fact, 31, just getting to the point. It says, in Yehoshua, whenever you see the word Jesus substituted with the word Yehoshua, because that's his name. That's the name that the disciples was calling him by 2000 plus years ago. The name Jesus didn't exist back then. The letter J didn't exist back then. If you was walking around and you called the Lord Jesus, he wouldn't answer you back. All right. Because Jesus is another God. That's that's not the Messiah. That's not the only begotten son of the heavenly father. The only begotten son of the heavenly father was born with a name. And the angel came to Joseph and Mary and said, name him Yehoshua. For he is born to save his people. His people is the 12 tribes of Israel. If you don't come from the sea line of Jacob, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, then you are not going to receive salvation because it's bigger than just being an Israelite. You have to be a part of the elect of the nation of Israel. When you read Ephesians, the first chapter, the elect of the nation of Israel was predestined to come into the truth and to receive the correct gospel and doctrine which will make them and others that's a part of the elect wise unto salvation through faith in Hamashiach Yehabashai by hearing the prophets preach and them believing in our report, believing on the correct gospel and doctrine. All right. Luke 5 and 31 and Yehabashai answering said unto them, they that are whole, meaning men that's teaching that they're perfect. You know, I keep the laws, you know, the laws, the statutes, the commandments. Look, the law, statutes, the commandments is perfect. But us as sinners being in the chains of darkness, this mortal earthly flesh, we can't keep the law, statutes and commandments perfect. So through Yahabashai, 
through his blood and sacrifice, the author and finisher of our faith under that new covenant, then we're going to be able to keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly. Because when you read Hebrews, the eighth chapter, you know, um, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, we're going to be changed out of these earthly bodies when we receive salvation. Lord willing, we are part of the elect because the elect of the nation of Israel is going to step into that new covenant first. And then the rest of the nation, right, that's destroyed on this side because of Bible prophecy, then through our loins, right, they're going to come back as our children. You can read about that in Ezekiel 37 chapter. It also goes into the new covenant and it mentions that King David is going to be there, right? Because King David is going to be king forever underneath Yahweh and Yahabashai, all right? He's the king of Israel forever. It mentions that what? Our children's children is going to step into that new covenant. That the Most High, he's going to wipe away all of our transgressions. So once we step into that new covenant, we're never going to go into captivity again. All right? The curses of Deuteronomy 28th chapter will not be on us. Once Yahabashai returns back and we are beamed up, meaning our spirits is receiving salvation, and being changed, right? These earthly bodies is going to be destroyed with Babylon the Great, which is America, all right? And the brothers and sisters that's a part of the elect all around the um, world, when you get beamed up, your spirit is what's getting beamed up, and it's going to be instantly changed, meaning put in a spiritual extraterrestrial body that can keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly. Your mortal body is going to remain on earth and be destroyed, all right? So that's that's the point. That's what we're looking forward to. So it says, And Yehobashai answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, right? Because if you're saying you're whole, you're saying you're perfect, you can keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly, you're making yourself equal with Yehobashai. You're lying to yourself, all right? Second John, the first chapter, says what? If a man says that he don't sin, then he deceiving himself. Every single day we sin. Do we willingly want to sin? No. That's the purpose of grace. So when you are out here teaching, you got to understand the importance of grace. You have to understand the compassion and mercy that the Most High Yahweh is having upon us, right? Us being the Israelites, beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel. And that's only through the blood and sacrifice of Yahabashai, all right? Our righteousness is as filthy rags. You got a lot of Israelites out here. They seek a vain glory. They got sponsorship deals. All right. They in the truth for clout because they never was nobody in the world. So now they come into the truth and they sin even more now because they make the father's house a house of merchandise. They sell you breakdowns. Right. They do all manner of things that Yahabashai rebuke people on. All right. So you got to watch these guys. It says, um, that's why I said the only camp you should be watching is great millstone camps. All right. If you're going to watch a camp that doesn't have great millstone on it, but they teach the same exact doctrine word for word, like how the men of great millstone teach, then that's fine. All right. As long as they given double honors. But it says they that are whole need not a physician. A physician is a doctor. Who's our physician and doctor? That's coming to heal us, Yahabashai. All right. It says, but they, but they that are sick. So we understand that we're sick as an entire nation. We have infirmities we're going through. The scriptures say the saints is worn out, right? We hate our lives unto death. We need Yahabashai. I don't know what's wrong with you people. All right. We going through global westernization. We dealing with false prophets, you know, false doctrines. The world hating us. We're going through our own personal trials and tribulations. We are very sick. All right. We're very sick. We're, we're in desperate need of divine intervention by Yahabashai. We really need Yahabashai on a personal level and as a nation. All right. It says, I came not to call the righteous, you know, guys that are perfect. If you're saying you're perfect, you don't need to receive salvation. You don't need to be delivered from nothing because you're, you're perfect. It says, but sinners to repentance. So that's the mindset of the elect. And that's a part of the baptism to confess your sins. 
you have to feel sorrowful. When you're returning back to Yahweh through Yahabashai, you can only return back to Yahweh through believing and having faith on Yahabashai's blood and sacrifice and the correct gospel and doctrine that Great Millstone is teaching through the Holy Spirit. All right? So you never want to develop a mindset that you're perfect in sinful flesh. That's, that's just an automatic no. All right? Now, this is Romans chapter 3 and verse 20 in the NLT. Because it's about having faith. Prove your faith, as it says in Romans 14 and 22, prove your faith to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai through your works. All right? The more you increase, you study, you know, you learn the doctrine, then you're going to get to a point where you probably go from just uploading, you know, clips that concerns prophecy to now you start doing lessons because every brother pretty much, you know, started out like that. You know, I started out like that. You know, the first couple of channels I had, I would upload like the clips and then, you know, I prayed for the spirit. The Lord put the spirit on me. And then, you know, the Lord, he activated that within me to start doing videos, you know, to start, you know, studying, being studious, you know, um, get fully persuaded, be fully convinced that this is the truth and, and prove to him that I have faith. Right. Romans 3 and 20, it says NLT for no one could ever be made right with the most high by doing what the law commands. Exactly. The law, statutes, and commandments are divine rules from the Heavenly Father. There's nothing wrong with the law. It's us that found fault with Yahweh. That's why we needed Yahweh's blood and sacrifice to cover us. Because when you read in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel was casted out of the Most High Sight, meaning kicked out of the Promised Land of Israel. All right? It says, because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments. That's why we had to go to the Levitical priesthood under that old system, because under that old system, Israel could never be perfect. That's why we had to do daily sacrifice. All right. It says, for no one can ever be made right with the most high by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are because we can't keep it. So now the question should be, what can I do to get back in good graces with Yahweh? Oh, have faith and believe on Yahabashai. Rehearse the righteous acts of the laws through faith. Realize I can't keep all the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly and that I need a savior. That's my only way out of this hellish, this hellish condition. All right? It says, and this is dealing with Hamashiach took our punishment. When you read Acts 5 and 31, Yahabashai's blood and sacrifice is only for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. All right. Only the elect of the nation of Israel is going to receive salvation, not the entire nation. Romans 321 NLT on down. It says, but now the most high has shown us, right? The elect of the nation of Israel, a way to be made right with him, right? To get back in good graces with him, to be reconciled back to him. That's through Yahweh, right? Without keeping the requirements of the law, because we can't keep the requirements of the law and sinful flesh, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with the Most High by placing our faith in Yahweh Hamashiach. That's how you get right with the Most High. It ain't about me, me, me. The Most High is not accepting none of your sacrifices. I don't think Israelites understand that. All right? There's no more Levitical priesthood. It says... We are made right with the Most High by placing our faith in Yahweh Mashiach. And this is true for everyone who believes that everyone is referring to who? The Israelites, right? No matter who we are, for everyone referring to the Israelites has sin. What sin? First John 3 and 4, sin of transgression against the law, right? Who was given the law, statutes, and commandments? When you read in the book of Exodus, only the Israelites. Right. Because that's our culture. It says for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of the most high's glorious standard. Right. So under that old covenant, there was no mercy as well. Under two or three witnesses, you would get put to death. All right. So now through Yahweh's blood and sacrifice, 
Now we have mercy and compassion from the Heavenly Father to where we are not held to that old covenant standard because we are in the sinful flesh. All right. But that starts with what? Belief and faith in Yehabashai. It says, yet the Most High with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteous. He did this through Hamashiach Yehabashai. When he freed us, the elect of the nation of Israel, ultimately all Israel, from the penalty of our sins, because all of us have committed sins worthy of death. Everybody is wearing mixed fabric. Your wife or wives are whores for the most part, unless the Most High really bless you on the side and give you a virgin. But then even with that, all right, she still has to battle the plague of the mind. She still got to battle feminism and westernization, you know, keeping herself in order because we under these curses, you know, none of us is perfect. All right. But the point is for the most part, all of us have committed adultery. We was conceived in adultery. People got tattoos. I mean, like, come on, you've done things in the world. You went off. It probably was sins unto death. Maybe you was a killer gang. Band. Who knows what the hell you did? All right. But if you're an Israelite, and you believe on this message, you believe on the correct gospel and doctrine, you have faith and belief in Yehabashai, then you're going to be under grace. And there's a high chance, you know, if you endure to the end, that you could be a part of the elect. It says, for the Most High presented Yehabashai as a sacrifice for sin, right? People are made right with the Most High. When they believe that Yehabashah sacrificed his life, shedding his blood, this sacrifice shows that the Most High was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past, which is who? The Israelites, right? Because every person in the nation of Israel has sinned against the Most High, right? So we need an atonement for our sins. We, we need a sacrifice. The only sacrifice that the Most High Accept it on our behalf is who? Yahabashai, a perfect atonement of sins. All right. His blood and his sacrifice that allowed us to be back in good graces or adopted back to the Most High through him. So we're forever in debt to Yahabashai. People are made right with the Most High when they believe that Yahabashai sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that the Most High was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past, which is who? The Israelites, right? Because every person in the nation of Israel has sinned against the Most High, right? So we need an atonement for our sins. We, we need a sacrifice. The only sacrifice that the Most High accepted on our behalf is who? Yahabashai. A perfect atonement of sins, all right? His blood and his sacrifice, that allowed us to be back in good graces or adopted back to the Most High through him. So we're forever in debt to Yehabashai. It's our reasonable service to offer up spiritual sacrifices. And you got particular men that can't even do that, all right? They'll, they'll say that, oh, I have faith, but you don't have no works. You know, or you getting lukewarm. Then you got guys that are spectators. They, they don't even do what we do to the fullest extent, but they want to critique everything like a damn woman. The Most High is going to destroy y'all. All right. Because, you know, during this grace period, you're supposed to use it to glorify the Lord. You know, realize, damn, you know, I'm a, I'm a sinner, but, you know, I'm called to repentance. It says, um... This sacrifice shows that the Most High was being feared when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead, right? That's why the scriptures say in um, John 3, 16, For the Most High so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That word, the word world in John 3, 16 is the Greek word cosmos, which means what? A specific arrangement of people, a singular family a singular organization on the planet earth, which is who? The Israelites, all right? It says, continuing on, right? So well, I'll read it from the top again, NLT, Romans three twenty six. for he was looking ahead 
and in, and including them in what he would do in this present time. The Most High did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair, meaning he's a balanced, perfect God, knowing good and evil, right? And just, and he declares sinners, sinners of Israelites, to be to be right in his sight when they believe in Yahabashai. There you go. You got to believe in Yahabashai. All right? That's what it's all about. Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by the Most High? I don't give a fuck how many videos you do, how many live streams you do, you know, how long you've been around, or even if you've been around for, for two seconds. The only way to be accepted by Yahabashai is by having faith and believing on Yahabashai. And it starts with the men that he set up, which is the apostles, you know, the elders, the brothers as a whole of great millstone. All right. It starts when you have faith and belief on the correct gospel and doctrine. That's when grace is on you or activated for you. All right. It says, can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by the most high? No. Because our acquittal, acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. We already broke the law already, generations ago. All right? The only way to be made right with Yahweh is by having faith and belief on Yahabashai. Do you believe he was risen after the third day, he was resurrected, and that his blood and sacrifice covers you? Come on. So we are made right with the Most High through faith and not by obeying the law. We rehearse the righteous acts of the law. The more our faith goes up, you know, we'll keep particular high holy days. We do lessons on it. But ultimately, we have to be under a grace period because we can't keep the laws in captivity. We're not sovereign and independent as a people. We haven't been raised up as Jews in this lifetime. We're coming back to remembrance of who we are, but we wasn't raised as Jews. We're coming out of a Gentile state of mind and into the truth. So knowing that we was Gentiles in times past, all right, believing in our pagan philosophies, following the way of the heathen, that should make you feel more sorrowful. That should make you put all your faith into Yahweh's blood and sacrifice, all right? Because that's the only way that we're going to overcome this man's system, ultimately. It says, continuing on, and I, I love this topic, man. It says, after all, is the Most High the God of the Jews only? Is it he also the God of the Gentiles? Of course he is. The, the Gentiles is referring to is the Israelites that was in a Gentile pagan state of mind. All right. Also known as the uncircumcision back during that time. It says, there is only one God and he makes people, Israelites, right with himself only by faith. Whether they are Jews, right, raised up as Jews, know that they're Jews, or Gentiles, meaning Israelite foreigners, Israelites in a Gentile pagan state of mind. Because now you can segue to Acts, the second chapter, where it talks about the proselytes or a, a newcomer, an Israelite that is getting out of that Gentile pagan state of mind, right? They stop believing in them false philosophies. And they convert back to their customs, which is what? The law, statutes, and commandments. Rehearsing the law, statutes, and commandments through faith. All right? So it's talking about the same people. It says, when you read scriptures, it says neither Jew nor Greek. It's talking about what? Whether it be circumcision or uncircumcision, both of them is the sea line of Israel. All right? Whether you're... A Israelite raised up as an Israelite, you know the customs, you, you keep the law to the best of your abilities, or on circumcision, getting out of the Gentile state of mind and, and being put back in remembrance of who you are, how you got in this condition, why we under the curses of Deuteronomy 28, you still got to have faith in your Habashah either or. That's why it says neither Jew nor Greek, because they both Israelites. It's talking about the same seed line. All right. Well, then. If we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. Exactly. The more your faith goes up, then you start learning more about the high holy days. All right. Then you rehearse the righteous acts through faith. So now let's go here. 
This is Galatians chapter 3 in the NLT. And let's see. Galatians 3 and... Okay. Let's see. Galatians 3 and 9. It says, NLT, so all who put their faith in Hamashiach share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith, right? Because what made Abraham righteous? The fact that he put his faith, he put his trust in Yahweh, and when he was challenged to display his faith, he didn't doubt or overthink or say, uh, I don't know, he just did it, all right? And right when he was about to sacrifice um, Isaac, then the angel came and stopped him pretty much, all right? Because he passed the test. The ultimate test for us is denying that mark of the beast, the RFID chip implant, as well as personal trials and tribulations off camera, right? It says, but those who depend on the Lord to make them right with the most high are under his curse. Exactly. You know, you see these niggas, they got face tattoos. They got tattoos, you know, you just see like how they, they carry themselves. They doing Hebrew Israelite rap videos and, and stuff like that. Like the message they portraying, it don't show that they feel sorrowful. All right. They're saying that they're perfect. And ultimately, they receive their consolation on the side. That's why the most high, he, he's embarrassing them. He's putting them to open shame before he destroyed them, right? So it says, so all you do is saying that you can keep the law perfectly, all right? You, you better hope you keeping the law perfectly because if you're not, if you break one law, you break them all. And the most high going to end up destroying you, all right? Now, ultimately, even when you come into the truth, before you was coming into the truth, you was breaking the law. So you're guilty. So you need an atonement for your sins, which would only be Yahabashah. So if you're saying Yahabashah, he's just a regular man, and you saying you perfect like him, I, I wouldn't want to be you for what the Most High going to do to you. All right? It says, um, I'm going to read it again. Galatians 3 and 10. But those who depend on the law to make them right with the Most High are under his curse. Right? For the scriptures say, curse is everyone who does not obey and obey all the commands that are written in the books, written in God's books of the law. Right. We're talking about the first five books. It says, so it is clear that no one can be made right. Meaning what? None of us is perfect. Any Israelite saying he's perfect, get away from him. All right. So it is clear that no one can be made right with the Most High by trying to keep the law. For the scriptures say it is through faith that a righteous person has life, right? This way of faith is very different from the way of law. Yep. Which says it is through obeying the law that a person has life. But Hamashiach has rescued us, the Israelites, from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross. All right. And this is how we have grace. This is why we're not held to the old covenant standard. Right. It says he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. He took on all our sins. That's why I made. That's why I said a point earlier that we're in debt to Yahweh. So the least you can do is glorify him. All right. That's that's the least you could do. It says, for it is written in the scriptures, curse is everyone who is hung on the tree. Through Hamashiach Yehavashai, the Mosai has blessed the Gentiles, Israelites, right? With the same blessing he promised to Abraham, because they're still a part of what? The seed of the promise. So that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. All right. Let me end it with this. Ephesians 2 and 8, I'm reading the KJV, and then I'm going to segue to the NLT. Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of the Most High. It's a gift to come into the truth. It's a privilege to have the Holy Spirit, to be around the men of the Lord, to be able to receive the correct doc um, doctrine and gospel that will make you wise unto salvation. That's a privilege. So what are you niggas doing that is not doing your videos? You want to miss camp for over a month? Like, what are y'all doing? What's, what's going on here? You don't fear the Lord? You forgot that you're a sinner called back to repentance? 
It's your reasonable um, service to offer up a spiritual sacrifice through Yahweh's blood and sacrifice. That's the only sacrifice the Most High is going to accept on our behalf. All right? You have to glorify Yahweh. You have to show reverence for Yahweh. If you're not doing that, then you're going to be destroyed. All right? So it says, not of works, least any man should boast. Exactly. Now, let's go to the NLT, and then I'm going to end the lesson. Ephesians 2 and 8. The Most High saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from the Most High. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. It says, for we are the Most High's masterpiece, right? The elect of the nation of Israel. And we're, we're only great through Yahweh and ultimately predestination, right? He has created us a new in Hamashiach Yahweh so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Because like I said, every action that's acted out in the universe is all predestinated, is all according to the will of the Most High Yahweh, all right? Nothing is going out of course. People don't got free will. Nobody is not doing nothing that they're not supposed to be doing according to the will of the Heavenly Father. All of our actions is predestinated. All right? So let's just hope that Yahweh, through Yahweh, predestinated us to come to um, be a part of the elect. All right? To be called and chosen, Lord willing. So, Lord willing, you was edified by the lesson. Shalom.